Hey everybody, this is a video tutorial for how to build the dual spoked polyhedron. Now the first thing you're going to need is this shape, the core, and I've done a video tutorial for this shape already, so I'll post a link and you can watch that and see how I made it. Um, you're also going to need 60 stacked rings of 26 magnets per ring. You're going to need uh, 12 tubes made out of 11 penta or not 11, 10 rather, pentagon rings each. So each one of these is 10 rings tall, and there's 12 of them. Then you're also going to need tubes made out of nine stacked uh, hexagon rings, and 20 of those. Um, you're also going to need um, 12 extra pentagons, and 20 of these subunits, which are similar to the subunits that I used in the dual cage sphere, but they're slightly different, so I'll show you how to make them. You start off with three uh, tubes of six hexagons. Uh, they're six tall. And then one tube of hexagons that's four tall. And then just one little extra hexagon. And so you start out with the three tubes that are six long. And you attach them together, just like that. And then you take the third one and attach it like that. Then you can take this one, this uh, lone hexagon, and pinch it into a triangle and add it into this middle area here. Not like that. Just like that. Then you want to take this stack of four and pinch the end into a triangle, just like that. And then you're going to put it down on this center hexagon. Just like that. And that is how you make these pieces, and you need 20 of them. So now, to start assembling this thing, I am going to set these aside, get them out of the way for now. Um, you need to first take uh, nine of these uh, stacked pentagon rings, which again are ten rings long, and attach them onto the pentagonal corners of the core, just like that. And you want to add nine of them on for now. There's twelve corners, but you want to leave three on the bottom bare because they can't really stand up if it's resting on them like legs. So you just want to do nine for now. Okay, and now you have this shape. And you want to take these stacked rings of 26 and flatten them out and cut them up into long straight pieces. Okay, and that should be enough for now. And what you want to do to start off is you're going to take these and attach them to these uh, pentagon tubes such that they bridge from one to the next one, just like that. And you want to go ahead and continue doing those all around until you've at least uh, totally completed these three corners. Okay, and once you've completed these three corners, you want to take those 12 extra pentagons that I mentioned earlier and take three of them for now and add them onto these corners that will complete the icosahedron frame and make it a lot stronger. And once this triangle here is complete, you can flip it over to rest on that. And then, 
you can go ahead and complete the rest of the shape, although first you need to add these on, and uh, complete corners with these extra pentagons as you go. Okay, and now you have this shape, which is actually pretty cool on its own, but um, now uh, you go on and you take these 20 stacks of nine hexagons, and for each one, you can see how in the middle of the triangle there's a hexagon um, on the core shape right there that's facing outwards. And what you want to do is you want to attach this down onto that hexagon. So it'll look just like that. And you want to do that to all 20 faces of this icosahedron. Okay, and now you're here. And what you want to do now is take these pieces and these hexagon tubes that are sticking out of the bottom are going to attach to these things that you just put down. And you want to make sure that the uh, edges of this are crossing the edges of the icosahedron because it's also possible to attach them down this way but uh, you don't want to do that. You want to attach them that way, just like that. And you want to add just five of them on for the moment, and you want to go all the way around one corner. Okay, and now that you're here, you want to flip it down so that it's sitting on uh, this face here. Okay, and once you get it flipped over, and that can be a little bit delicate, you can add the last 15 of these on and finish it up. And that is how you build the dual-spoked polyhedron. And it's actually kind of interesting because of the way the spokes are arranged. You can take this inner icosahedron and... Ah, yeah, you can't really see it, but you can kind of move it around a little bit, um, almost independently of the dodecahedron frame. It's kind of cool, although it's tough to see in the video. But that's how you do it. So I guess I'll smash it now.